Today is the start of season number 11 here at Rugby Town, our second in the Premier League and looking for a second successive season to get into Europe. Yes, that is right. Europa League football awaits us this year. This season's going to be a challenge. There's a lot to juggle. Of course, yesterday we concluded the transfer window. The board's expectations this year, a mid-table finish, reached the latter stages of the Europa League as well. I would love to win this whole thing. Of course, winning the Europa League does get you into the Champions League. Although, given the fact I'm discussing this in August, probably getting ahead of myself a little bit. And really, we should really just focus on the here and now. It's 3 o'clock, Saturday the 13th of August, 2033. And our first game of the year is against Man City. Uh, yeah, Manchester City predicted to finish first. Erling Haaland's their captain. And he's still good. You know, I'd say that like he never goes bad in football manager saves. Like He's in his mid-30s now. He's still ridiculous. I can't wait for him to retire. As well as that, we have got an away day to Fulham. So let's run the intro, get right into things. I'm kind of scared for today. How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 81. Today is Tuesday, and today, season 11, we've got our new kits on full display. Michael Bolton, of course, may be leaving the club. If someone bids £105 million, I really, really don't want to lose him. Now, annoyingly, heading into this year, we actually have four first-team players missing. Three injuries, one suspension. All of these players are at least in the squad for the game ordinarily. They are going to be missed. And to kick things off today, we are going to do a little bit of a squad rundown. I did this last season. You guys seem to really like it. Today, I'm going to do a different approach. Last time, I ran through kind of the best starting 11, the subs, then the reserves. I'm going to go position by position today, starting with the goalkeeper, where, oh, well, I feel like if you've been watching lately, you know what the situation is. We have brought in Haddad. Morad here is a very, very good goalkeeper. Is he £35 million? Good. Good. That is going to be the big fat question mark. He conceded 19 goals in 34 games last year. An immense performance in Belgium. That needs to transition to the Premier League because our goalkeeper of last year, Lucas Schumacher, was not good enough. Alongside these two, we have got a new look third choice goalkeeper, Callum Platt. Came through our academy. He's here because he's homegrown at club. You know, every Premier League team has one of these weird homegrown in nation or club players. I know, for example, Man City, they have Scott Carson. Callum Platt, he's our Scott Carson. This guy's going to be here for the next 20 years just as the third choice. Now, of course, the defence is an area where we have brought in some new personnel for this coming year, and that is probably fortunate because, well, some of the players of last year aren't available at least to start the season. NDIA is injured for two to five weeks. Still don't really know what we're doing with this guy longer term. We've just given him a new £60,000 a week deal. I am now beginning to train him at right wing back. I feel like long term, if he doesn't improve, which it feels like at this point, he might just never improve, he will just become the ultimate utility man, homegrown at club, kind of Swiss army knife. He could be the Senegalese John O'Shea. And that's how I'm imagining it. The other player unavailable for today's game probably would ordinarily start. Dexter Snedden joined us halfway through the year, had a bit of a difficult kind of time getting up to speed, having not played all year for Arsenal until January when he joined us. That said, I do like this guy as a centre-back a lot. Really, really good physicals, loves important matches. As already mentioned, bit annoying he's suspended today. Also, he's wanted by a club in Saudi Arabia. Uh... I'm just sat thinking, would I actually sell him? I mean, I bought him in for 28 million. He's young, he's English, he's hungry. Yeah, I wouldn't sell him. In terms of our other centre-back options, one of the players who's really highly rated when it comes to star ratings, but perhaps less so by me, is Jefferson Mascara. Last year, he was our backup right-back. To start the year with us playing with wide attacking midfielders now, he's actually going to be playing out on the right-hand side as a right winger. Yeah, he's one of those players where he has a really high star rating, but we, if we actually compare him with Bolton... I feel like the stars are just a lie. Like, you can't really convince me that Mascara is a better right-back than Bolton. Like, the, the, the stars, they, they're just incorrect. They lie, people. L learn this. I, got, I feel like I've said that so many times over the course of my channel. Some people will still tell me Mascara is better. If you think that, you're wrong. I already mentioned Bolton, who will be starting at right-back. Out on the other side, of course, we do have NDIA as a backup, but the starting left-back has to be Lee Min. Had a breakout year last year, the left-footed uh, left-back from South Korea. We signed him for £14.5 million. He was one of our best players, so yeah, he is the nailed-on starter this year. And in at centre-back, speaking of nailed-on starters, a new arrival this summer in Gonzalo Rodriguez. 
I would expect to see in the first team quite a lot. 21 years old, Argentinian, bags of potential, professional personality, some really good determination, immense in the air, not the quickest, but I wouldn't say he has cement in his boots, expecting some good things from him and hopefully he will just grow and grow and grow. I'd like to think he could be a kind of nailed on centre-back option for the foreseeable future. Alongside him to start the year is another new arrival in Ashley Phillips, was relegated with Brighton last year. We picked him up for £16 million. I'm not sure what to expect from him, but given the fact he is one of our highest earners at £60,000 and I'm not really expecting him to be a regular starter, when he does feature in the team, he really needs to play well to justify that price. Today against Man City, he will be tested. There are two more super depth options at centre-back. Donovan Twos is kind of just the fifth slash sixth choice centre-back. If he plays, things have gone wrong. And the other man worth mentioning is Iwanami, Japanese 19-year-old, plays loads of the Japanese national team. He can play on the left-hand side, he can play on the right-hand side. He is that third choice fullback option who's nice and versatile is on the bench for the first game of the year, has been developing nicely, would like to give him some minutes this year with us juggling European football. Now, just as a little reminder, this year we are playing a new shape. The shape itself is kind of different. In terms of the instructions, they are very, very similar to what we're used to. Essentially, the reason for this change away from the narrow system is to try and deal with teams that have overlapping fullbacks. It's still going to be very aggressive and attacking when it comes to the instructions. I'm just hoping with wider players out there, we can at least apply a bit of pressure to wingbacks when we don't have have the ball. In terms of the defensive midfielders, it is two players who ended the year for us in these positions. Akera Forms, I feel like does have a bit of a point to prove at defensive midfielder. He is starting in the more defensive of the two roles ahead of Jao Victor, who, if we just compare to the two players, is better mentally, but I think it's just lacking in the physicals and technicals required at this kind of level. Jao Victor will be on the bench this year. He will get minutes. I feel like that applies to a lot of the squad, to be honest. The deep line playmaker in our team has to be Fabian Riviere. This guy is absolutely immense as a deep line playmaker. He has improved a lot during his time at the club. I feel like he's a bit of a specialist in terms of he's kind of just built for this role. A player who I feel like is not a flashy player, bit of an unsung hero. I'd love him to come up with some big moments this year. I feel like when you look at his passing and his vision, he should be unlocking defences for fun. In terms of the other defensive mid options, we've got Raul Bellardo, who I was looking to sell throughout the summer. I don't really know where he fits into the team. He still could leave in the next month before the window closes. And another very similar Similar player is Wesley Gomez, two more creative type players. They can also both play a centre attacking mids, but with us pivoting to wide attacking mids, well, I probably don't need both of them. They both have very high values. In a weird way, I wouldn't mind selling both of them and then signing someone new and exciting in before the end of the transfer window, which if we just have a little look, it, it's not that far away. It's at the end of August. In terms of attacking midfielders, I am looking at youth for this year. Misiak is going to be playing at centre attacking mid. I have seen people ask Jack, why play this guy at centre attacking mid when he's natural out on the right? And then why play Sam Fay out on the right when he's natural at centre attacking mid? Well, my viewer, I'm so glad you asked. It pretty much entirely comes down to physicals. I feel like inside forwards just need that little bit more pace to make on rushing runs, especially with the new system. The players in the wide area are going to have ground to cover. Misiak is not the most mobile of blokes. I feel like he's he's more of a De Bruyne than a Jeremy Doku. Is say, Sam Faye Jer Jeremy Doku? I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Doku's playing well this year. That's a compliment. Sam Faye, Jeremy Doku, Scottish edition. And on the left-hand side, we are going with Pelagata. He had no knowledge of left attacking mid at the end of last season. He has learned it over the summer. I gave him a book on how to play left attacking mid. He's now learned to play there. Does like a little bit in the pace department, but at 19 years old, still time for him to gain that. And for an inside forward, I just feel like he ticks a lot of boxes. I do feel like left attacking mid is an area where we are taking some risks when it comes to our ability and players we have who can play here this year. Pietro, looking at you to step up, my friend. In terms of backups in the wide area, I've already talked about Mosquera kind of being the right-hand sided backup option. We could also move some of our starting strikers deeper to solve that problem as well. Another player who could play out wide is Sunkule out on the left-hand side, although with his lack of pace, I don't really love him as a wide man. One man who I do love, and we signed him last episode, is Sebastian Areco, a man who can cross, a man who can run, and has good off the ball. He's 20 years old, very unproven. I'm quite excited to see what he gets up to this year. And in terms of some other depth attacking options, we have Sebastian Kurland, who's a good creative player, who will probably be the immediate backup to Misiak. 
And someone who I'm thinking maybe a few of you thought I'd forgotten all about, Murphy and Goma. Yes, he is still here. He is still him. Uh, he will be a more backup option, I think. But he does have a very strong left foot. He could be the backup option at inside forward. Uh, to be fair, I was going to say in an emergency. You know what? I think in Europe he could definitely do this role for us. And last but not least, when it comes to strikers in the team, it is really just the two Rogers show. Of course, we've got players like Sam Fay who could play as a striker. Sinkule as well could play there. Roger Spina is someone who is going to miss out on a starting spot in the team, I think, to start the year at the very least. He was a good goal scorer last year, but at one point he did go 10 hours without a goal. I feel like had he been a bit more clinical, we could have won a few more games last year. Roger Ohasa will be the man starting up top. Of course, he was attracting the interest of Man City over the summer. He signed a new deal that kicks in at the end of the current season it is going to see him go on to £75,000 a week but yeah this is the man I really want to build around he is just an absolutely insane advance forward to spearhead the attack now when everyone is fit this is how I envisage we will set up to start the year with the best 11 Sneddon wouldn't be suspended he'd be in at centre back elsewhere Sam Fay would be playing out on the right hand side Sinkule and NDIA would be on the bench however those players are all unavailable for today's games. As a result of that, there is a little bit of a shuffle, which I don't necessarily love. Uh, if I was going to identify an area of immediate real concern, centre-back is a bit of a worry. We've got no NDIA today, no Sneddon today either. So as a result of those two absentees, it is going to be Rodriguez and Phillips at the back. Two new additions signed this year. They've never played alongside each other. The combined outlay on these players was over £25 million, so I'd like to think they can perform. As I mentioned, though, their job today is containing Erling Haaland. I feel like £100 million centre-backs probably struggle with that task. Looking at the season preview, right now we are down in 11th place with the board's expectation of mid-table. That feels perhaps about right. My own selfish, own kind of ambitious aim would be European football this year by some method. It could be league position, it could be cup success, it could be the Champions League by winning the Europa League. I do feel like this year getting sick like we did last year is going to be tricky. Do you think we benefited from a few of the bigger teams in and around us slipping up? Speaking of bigger teams slipping up, let's hope that we can inflict some damage on Man City to start the season i've given you that little rundown of the squad hopefully now you feel all caught up truthfully we've not changed the squad too much this year i feel like much of the confusion and changes are just down to the tactical system my theory as i mentioned really with this is whilst we're not changing any of the instructions too radically the shape is just going to help us a little bit more in terms of when we don't have the ball i feel like elite teams like to have these attacking fullbacks and it'd be safe to say that this narrow system did sometimes leave our wing backs a little exposed and doubled up on. I feel like over the last few years of this save game, and in fact, perhaps the entirety of the save game, now I think about it, I've kind of always locked into one system and used it. But I do feel like for this coming year, there is going to be a need to kind of mix things up. With the players that we have on the pitch when we have our full strength 11, we can actually alternate between the two tactical systems at will. So if one isn't working, I can always go and switch to the other one. Today, that's going to be a little bit trickier just due to the injuries we've got. But I don't kind of feel like the squad has been reconstructed to fit this wider system we will be using both throughout the course this year anyway Manchester City at home the stand on the far side is still empty of course in the FA Cup we get to use it because the FA Cup allows you to stand up to attend a football match looking at this Man City team they've got Ansu Fati out on the left hand side that's a very scary player uh, and Lee Min is injured that is uh, it's not the start of the year I wanted because obviously NDIA is already out for <laughs> Two to five weeks. You know who this means is coming on. Uh, can you hear that? Can you hear? It's the Kenji theme tune. I don't know what Kenji's theme tune sounds like, but Kenji's coming on. Last year, he played six games for us. He's going to make his first appearance of the year inside the first half of a game against Man City. I feel bad for him. Good news, though. We've inflicted revenge. Phil Foden's just gone off the pitch injured, and suddenly it's, it's half time. There's not been a shot on target in the first half there. Not vintage Barclays to start things today. I don't want to come across as anti-football. Nil-nil against Man City, perfectly fine with me. I will get a bit shouty-shouty. If the intention of this system was to be more defensively solid, I, I guess it's working? Okay, we've now played an hour. There's a defensively solid kind of mindset to have here. There's also the, the mindset of it's not great content for us or the kind of attendees when nothing's happening. Mosquera has not had a great game out on the right-hand side. Murphy and Goma, on you come to play as an inside forward. And out on the left-hand side, Areco. 
on Yuka, my friend. The player where I've really brought in to replace Alvarez, of course, the former Man City man in our team. We've swapped one Argentine out with another. This guy, has he ever played a game of professional football? He hasn't. I've signed him for £7 million. Welcome to the Premier League. Elsewhere, Rivier is not having a great game at deep line playmaker. Uh, you know what? I might regret this. I'm bringing in Bilardo. I I've got him transfer listed. I'm trying to sell him, but I feel like, you know what? This could be the game to put him in the shop window. And having made that change instantly, we've got a highlight. I have also just noticed in the 3D match engine that her dad, our new goalkeeper, has a green headband. That could be a source of great power. That that's what I'm hoping, at least anyway. Uh, I have just noticed. It's almost a kick clash today. The fact that I'm only noticing it in the 63rd minute really gives you an idea of how much has happened on the pitch thus far. Phillips to Fawns. Could go back to Phillips. Will go back to Phillips. Look at this. This is this is like watching Prime Barcelona. Look at us go. Bolton. Phillips could go back. Why does uh, Murphy and Goma? Bolton. I love this. This is quite nice. The 105 million pound asking price right back is getting forward Bolton he's gonna float in a recos there oh my word he scored it's his first ever game on a football pitch of a men's senior game match words they're hard we're winning one nil that's all that matters some people mocked me in the comment section yesterday for signing a reco some people said i was just wasting money you call that a waste of money i can't believe he's won a header by the way he's not good in the air don't care one up Serdar with the ball, lays it back to Gvardiol now for Man City. We can't afford to get too carried away just yet, although I, I do really, really want to get carried away. Uh, the game is lagging a little bit for me. I've tweaked some stuff to try and make it run better. Maybe it's better now. Maybe it's fine in the recording. Rojas, are you okay? No, I'm going to blame the lag. Rojas would have scored if my PC wasn't dropping frames. Okay, I think everything's fine now. I don't know. My PC is just having a moment, everyone. You know, we do do this stuff live. It's a miracle that stuff doesn't go wrong more often. But at least for now, it's all going A-OK. -okay. We're a goal to the good. 15 minutes left. I wouldn't mind another. Rojas is surely offside there. He's, he's offside there. I don't know why I'm celebrating it. I mean, I've not celebrated it. Areco, like, it would have been a great assist for him. It's never going to count. I, like we're wasting my, I know it's offside football man. let's just get on with the game fuming I was about to say it's amazing how well we've done in this first game of the year Man City have had one shot on target all game they could be about to have their second they're getting it forward I don't like this don't foul him don't let him score either though James Garner scores it's 1-1, and I'm telling you now, look at those stats. It's completely against the run of play. I'm fuming. Jeremy Pino putting in the initial cross. It was flicked on. Phillips half-headed it away, and Goma did not jump. And from there, the ball finds its way to Garner, who just smashes it in. In off the post. At, le at least her dad's headband looks good in 3D. Still not seeing our new goalkeeper make a save yet today. Oh, don't do it. This is a different highlight. It looks the same. Anyone else getting deja vu? Not another corner. Please, we've been so good in this game. We've bullied them. And now it's 2-1 Man City. I'm so upset. We have absolutely dominated this game. We've been so, so good. And then just two set pieces. Just two, two corners. Not fair. They're using overpowered corner tactics. Okay, I was about to pause and make changes. I'm, I'm Obviously, I'm not going to do that now because there's another highlight happening. But if they do go on and score a third here... I mean, it probably is game over. I hate to admit it. I hate to concede defeat. Haaland forces a save out of her dad. Good save by the keeper. There's another corner. Don't do it to me. Oh, my. Imagine if they scored another. They've just hit the post. Okay, the ball's going to have play. Roger Rojas. I was going to take him off, but actually, maybe this is the kind of situation where the, sh the striker system should come into its own. We'll keep a reco on the pitch. I am going to take off Rojas and bring in Roger Ospina, and Goma and Misiak move into the middle, which is actually perfectly fine. We are in this unfortunate position now, aren't we, where we've got to chase the game. I feel like we're now leaving ourselves more open at the back. It's going to cause us some issues, and Goma doesn't get there. Iwanami does get there. Ospina, the game's doing weird stuff again. I'm sorry, folks. Misiak, Areco's offside there, but it goes back to Misiak. Could he do it? Could he make something happen? Back. Bolton! He scored on the last day of the season from there. This time he misses the target. Okay, there are three minutes of added time. Well, three minutes left of the added time. There's now none of those minutes. It finishes 2-1. I feel like we've been very hard done by. The only thing that can make this worse is if Lee Min is out for an extended period. I mean, to be fair, it could be worse. We could be West Ham. They lost 8-1 on the first game of the season. I mean, 2-1 against the team predicted to finish top and they've scored two set pieces. 
It, it could have been worse. Okay, never mind. I don't think it could have been worse. Uh, Lee Min's out for four to five weeks, which I know doesn't sound like that big of a deal. That's both my left backs out for the next month. Yeah. And if you're wondering, Jack, what are the options at left back? Uh, Kenji. Ke Kenji is the option. If, if Kenji's not available, Montgomery. <laughs> it's not great. It's not great. Okay, look, things haven't gone great to start the year, but we can turn things around with a more winnable game, maybe. Look, Fulham should be beatable. Media prediction of 17th. They are crap. They've been in the bottom half the last few years. We've got an away day to do. Craven Cottage, maybe that'll cheer me up. There's only one way to cheer myself up after that last game. Straight into the away day today. We are leaving little old rugby in the Midlands. We are heading to London and we are heading to Fulham. And here, just west of Putney Bridge, we have Fulham Football Club, Craven Cottage and Fulham. Which I will say now, there's a, there's some good pubs around, I think it's around this road. There's, there's good good pubs, good pubs. This pub, good, good food at this pub. The Temperance, I'm giving you an endorsement right here. I know what some of you are thinking, who goes to a football match on an away day and enjoys food? Like, if you're going to Fulham of all places, indulge. It's not cheap. You might as well make the most of the stay. I'm not paying eight quid a pint. Also, if you go to that pub, you get a lovely walk through the, the gardens and parks and roads of Fulham to Craven Cottage, which, if you didn't know, is having a stand redeveloped. This has been going on for years. I'm not even sure if it's actually reopened at the moment. I think it maybe opens next year. Either way, we'll probably see some verge of it in development. Here is Craven Cottage, just next to the River Thames. And if you didn't know, why is it called Craven Cottage? Uh, I will show you why it's called Craven Cottage. Uh... <laughs> There's a cottage. Yeah, that, 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 there, that's the stand. I will be honest, of all the street view options, it's not the best street view of the, the cottage of Craven Cottage, is it? There, is there better footage than this? Oh, if I go back in time, may, may, maybe I can show a better view. Like, here's the cottage. If we go here, it's 2008. There's the cottage. There's the stand. It's changed a bit since then, though. I don't know if it's just because there's building works going on. It doesn't look as good, does it, anymore? doesn't look as good. Now, in terms of parking, we are in London, so th there's not really any parking, I'm afraid. So, I mean, you could try and park on the road, but you will probably piss off the local. In terms of activities around the stadium, I mean, there's a there's a park that you could go for a walk through. That's, that's kind of it. I mean, you are in London, so you could just do anything in the capital, but yeah, I'm... <laughs> It's Fulham. If you didn't know, Fulham's quite posh. I, I think that's a fair description for Fulham. Uh, let's just get to the ground, shall we? Should we have a look in it? Or, uh, you know what? Before we go in it, let's have a look around it. <laughs> Where am I? What is going on here? Is this the football stadium? <laughs> to the right? I've not been, not been to this part of the stadium, in case you didn't know. Also, whoever was walking down this alleyway got this far and then just decided to turn back. I can't blame them. Here is the home entrance bit of the stadium. Again, the uh, the building work, kind of the, the black plasticky stuff. It's not a great aesthetic, is it? It, like, it really is detracting from the stadium, which actually looks quite nice at a glance. Here is the, the ticket office. It definitely has kind of old school football stadium vibes about it, doesn't it? I mean, if you just saw this building from the outside, you wouldn't think it's a football stadium. I was going to go to the inside. I clicked in the stadium. We've ended up with drone footage of the ground. This is from July 2023. Here is the stand. So maybe it, maybe it's finished now? Fulham fans, let me know. Is this stadium finished? I know it's been worked on for years. They have got the old enemy of the away day, solar panels. If you're wondering, chat, why do you hate solar panels? No idea. I'm just a bitter old man who likes to complain about modern technology. So we have the stadium here, the River Thames. Here's the parks I mentioned that you can walk through to the ground. And then over there is London. In fact, you can see over there, the Shard and etc. of London. Actually, that's quite picturesque, doesn't it? Almost makes London look nice. And for a more grounded view in the stadium, this is from 2015, so it is out of date. But here is a picture of Craven Cottage. And like I mentioned, there is literally just a cottage in the corner of the ground, which is also the changing rooms, which I, I absolutely adore. Now, often in away days, I complain, don't know, about copied and pasted stadiums not having character. This might be the most characterful stadium in the whole of England. Having said all of that, I've just gone through all the other street view options in and around the ground. None of them look good. Uh, this one here, particular highlight. Like, who stands on this spot and goes, this will make a good photosphere? It looks bleak. You want it, I want it. Little bit of bonus Google Earth just to end the day. Here is Craven Cottage Stadium. There is the cottage. Here's the ground. Um, you know what? As far as away days go, it looks absolutely amazing. I have just been distracted by this. 
Is this just an apartment block? What is going on here? This looks like someone's built a building in a video game. Like this, this, it looks like a bad scan, but I do actually think this is the actual shape of the buildings. I can't work out if I hate all of this. There's definitely a story to whatever this is. I think it's like residential buildings. Someone please let me know. Apologies, I have just had like a TikTok attention span zoomer moment there, haven't I? Here's the ground. Uh, obviously, that stand has now been built. There isn't an empty ground there. I actually really like Raven Cottage as a ground. I'm almost disappointed there's not footage of the inside. If you want my review of the actual away day, this is the away end. The toilets, grim. Just don't use the toilets in the away end. The rest of it's fine. Kind of. And now for the bit you're all here for, the away day score. Definitely what everyone's here for. Craven Cottage, I love this as a ground. The lack of the footage has actually really upset me. And I kind of want to know what the new stand looks like, because I know it is meant to be quite nice. But just based on what I've seen there, I can't give it higher than a 5 out of 10. I was hoping the away day would raise my spirits. Somehow it's made me more sad. I feel like it didn't live up to my memories of the actual ground. Hopefully, player performances can live up to my memory of, uh, well, what is possible from our team. Not what we saw last game. We can do better than that. Only scoring one goal is not up to standard for us. Another thing that's not up to standard for us is the quality of our starting 11, because we've got a fair few injuries. Lee Min's out, NDIA's out, Sir Iwanami. Welcome to left back, my friend. I, I hope he's going to be good. I, I'm trying to be really friendly with Kenji, and I hope that helps his performances. Some good news, though. Sneddon is back in the team at centre-back. I do think Sneddon and Rodriguez is going to be the go-to centre-back setup for us this year. So keen to see them kick on. I feel like they're two players who can really complement one another. Rodriguez isn't that quick. I think Sneddon can make up for that. Rodriguez Rodriguez is a little bit better in the air, which I think can make up for the fact Sneddon isn't a pylon of a centre-back. Elsewhere in the attacking mid position, I am opting to drop Mascara for this game. He was really disappointing last game, had the audacity after it to ask for a new contract. I've told him no. Doesn't mean that Areco is going to be starting out on the right-hand side, of course. We brought him into this inside forward out on the left. I do want to try and develop his weaker foot. Another thing that I am going to do is train him to play out on the right-hand side. I feel like this guy could just be a really useful utility attacking option this year. With the shuffle in the final third as well, Pelagata is going to play out on the right. I feel like to start the year, we can experiment a little bit with kind of configurations, players in different roles on different sides. Just find out what works. I feel like what we've got here should work today. Also, I have restarted Football Manager. There was some weird stuff going on during the Man City game. It looked better in the recording than it did for me playing the game. So hopefully, just restarting the game has fixed it. Of course, by restarting the game, I've also reset the look modifier, you know, because that's a thing with Football Manager. When you boot up the game, if you've got bad luck, just restart it. You know, I had an unlucky game last time. I've turned it off and on. The theory is that we should play better now. That's not happened so far. Okay, we've got a corner. A Reco over it. Left foot whipped in. Bolton is there. A Reco with a goal and an assist in his first two games. Bolton gets off the mark for the season. We don't get to see it very often, but I'm, I'm a very big fan of the of this kit. Look at this kit. It just looks good, doesn't it? The new, the red and black stripes, inspiring stuff. We look like AC Milan. We're starting to play like AC Milan. A Reco Iwanami. What can you do, Kenji? Do it for me. Do it for him. He whips it in. For a moment, I thought he was going to get an assist. I got carried away in the moment. Instead, Hermanson for them is going to collect it. Fulham maybe feel a bit hard done by to be scored against at the point they were. They had started the game pretty well. Possession's been 50-50. Sneddon wins a header there, but doesn't really nod it down into a particularly good area for us. And suddenly, we need to do some defending. David Washington has scored. I'm looking for a flag to be raised. The linesman hasn't raised his flag. That usually isn't a good sign in Football Manager. It's going to VAR review. The goal's going to be disallowed. Breathe a sigh of relief. I know he's probably a regen, but can we discuss how good is the name David Washington? But how does he fit that on his shirt? Wait, is he, is he a real person? He might be a real person. He's a it's a real person with the name David Washington, and he has that name on his shirt. He is Brazilian, so he probably has... Another okay. I was gonna say he probably has another name. He does have another name, but he just goes by his first name. His first name is David Washington. I love it. Is one of the greatest names in world football. Is it weird that I've never heard of that kid? He looked quite good, didn't he? From his attributes, he looked very, very solid. I just assumed he wasn't a real person. I take it all back. I'm sorry, David. Well, he nearly scored against me. I feel like he's taken my insulting or complimenting personally. I feel like it's probably an insult to say you have a name that's like a regen's name, but it is very regen-like, isn't it? Okay, we've got it away. Five minutes left to the half. I'm not enjoying this. David, if you could just calm down, that would be lovely. 
Also, if the game just wants to end the highlight, thank you, Football Manager. That'd be lovely too. Okay, half time here at Craven Cottage. It's not been a classic performance, but we are a goal to the good. Fulham started the game really, really well. They had the bulk of their chances right at the start of the game. Beyond, while well, that mild scare with the offside goal, we have been in large control of this game. In spite of that, still going to get shouty shouty. A little bit concerned that Roger Rojas hasn't scored yet this year. It'd be fair to say that so far the performances with the new tactical system haven't been super inspiring. You know, if things don't work, there's no reason why we can't just revert back to the other system. But I feel like at least using this for a little bit, seeing if it works, seeing if it kind of is a solution to some of the defensive fragilities we had last year could be good. Also, why has the lighting changed so much in game? Why is it all so weird? It lo looks like we've gone back into the industrial revolution or something. Well, why is it all dark and musty? Does anyone else's football manager ever look like this? Is this just London air pollution? Like, what is going on here? I, I feel like there's smog coming into the pitch. Xavi Espar lays it to Ruiz. I'll tell you what, this Fulham team, they've just signed players with good names, haven't they? Ruiz, for them now, has the ball. Plays inside. David Washington scores. He's offside. I've seen the flag raised. Everything's fine. Also, is the, sm is the smog clearing? I think the smog's clear. Is, is it getting brighter now? What is going on with the football manager light in this year? Most of the time, it's great. Some days you get it like this, though. This just looks weird. I mean, David just probably can't see the defenders. I'm impressed the lights haven't seen David in the pitch. Okay, we are only ahead in this game because David doesn't know the offside rule. So I do need to change things up here. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to go back to the old faithful system. Ospina's going to come in alongside Rojas, Misiak and Pelagata. And then, well, we're going to, I think, just keep this shape and maybe change up some personnel. I'll bring in Goma and play Misiak and attacking midfielder. To be honest, with all the injuries we've got, we've not got loads of options on off the bench, so I feel like my hands are a little bit tied in terms of what we can do to mix things up here. I have now changed up the system as the fog persists. If we could get a second goal, that would be nice. It's going to be a bit annoying if having just reverted back to our old system, we score immediately. It's going to make me feel like I just should go back to the old system, but... I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's worked to a point, but we've got to look for ways in which we can improve. And I do feel like just changing the shape is one way to maybe explore that. Ball's played forward, by the way. Ospina on off the bench, dropped to start the year. Hits the woodwork, I think. This lighting is really annoying me. I'm, I'm this close to going to 2D. I, I'll tell you what, it's a good job there's names on the far side because I can't read the, the shirt numbers or anything. Iwanemi, what can you do? Can he find someone in the middle? Ball in, Rojas. Heads it over. I feel like if I didn't acknowledge how weird the lighting, some of you would think that your phones are broken or your TV's broken or your PC monitor's playing up. No, it really does look crap today. There's three minutes of added time. We're only a goal up. We've looked massively on top. Well, since we've changed the system, to be honest. We're bringing the ball forward again here. Ospina, Misiaki's offside. No one in this game knows the offside rule. What is the offside rule? My question is, is there a direct correlation between bad air quality and players not being able to stay on side. I mean, on the evidence of this game here, there's definitely a relationship. Okay, four minutes of added time. I was going to say I'm happy just to see it whiz by. It's not going to whiz by. There is late drama here. Riviere lays it short to Panzo, and Ketia gives the ball to Sned, and the two former Arsenal men exchanging possession as Ospina fails to hold up the play. Ball's played forward. David Washington's through again. David Washington scores. Is he offside for a third time? If he's offside for a third time, I almost feel bad. If, the, if this is given, though, I'm going to be so angry. I think it's going to be given. It's going to be given. David has David's punished me. I, ha I hate David. What happened? I mean, it's just one big ball forward, isn't it? Ball's lumped forward. David Washington's there. Chest it down. Hits it. And with two and a half minutes left, that is probably, that's probably game, isn't it? Was, it? was it close to being offside? Ugh, he's on. He's on. I can't even argue with it. I mean, I'll be honest, I knew this season was going to be tough and I expected a challenge. I just thought the challenge would really come once we had European football to juggle. Not in the first two games of the year where we failed to win either. Two really, really disappointing results today. And a disappointing away day. I just feel sad today. Not good vibes. The only thing that's cheering me up slightly is that you might remember at the end of last episode, I just started scouting loads of youngsters. All the scout reports are starting to come in for all the wonder kids I scouted. So maybe I'll just sign some of these to cheer me up. Although looking through these, None of them look that good, which is a shame. You know what? Some good news. Jao Victor in the process of signing a new contract. We're just waiting on a work permit for it. He's been asking about leaving because he wants more money. 
I'm just giving him more money. And in fact, that does apply to a few other players. But I'll talk about that more next episode. But for anyone who was worried about players not getting new contracts, because there were a few unhappy about it, I am working on that. I mean, I don't want to overreact too much because I feel like we've got unlucky in both games today. If we just look at the XG table, we should be sixth <laughs> for what it's worth. We should be on 3.5 points. We've been robbed. I am fully aware it's just a really weak argument, but uh, I don't know. I think both games we've got unlucky today. A defeat against Man City I can tolerate. The draw against Fulham is more annoying, to be frank. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back next episode, the Europa League, League phase begins, you can see here, on the 8th of September. I think that's actually when the draw's made. So next episode, don't be surprised if we have our first European away days of the series. That's probably what it's going to be. Not an ideal start today. I'm already beginning to question the new tactical system, but I do feel like we just have to give the players a little bit of time to try and adapt to it. Naturally, with all the injuries we've got as well, that is a concern. I feel like I don't really want to overanalyze or overreact until I actually have the first team 11 on the pitch. Saying all of that, based on the severity of some of these injuries, that's not going to be for a little while. We have still got £16 million in transfer budget, some wage budget as well, so don't be surprised if I make a signing or two just to react to all the injuries in terms of just trying to add some depth in the next two weeks of the window being open. But I will talk all about that tomorrow, next episode. Things are going to go better, I hope, next time out. I'll see you guys for it. I hate the lighting in the match engine sometimes. Craven Cottage let me down. Man City are annoying. And we've still not won a game this year. I'll see you tomorrow.